Welcome, Professor Taylor and Professor Bruns, to the UC Botanical Garden. Tom, Professor Bruns, what do you think we're going to see today? Well, <clears throat> today we'll see a variety of fungi, uh, and they'll be doing one of three things. They'll either be uh, decaying dead plant material, or they will be parasitizing living plants, or they will be mutualistic with living plants. But we'll also see the ectomycorrhizal fungi, which uh, are the ones associated with, with pines and oaks and are required for their growth. Uh, and they tend to produce, or the ones we see anyway, will tend to produce large mushrooms. So I'm hoping we'll see some of those. So you mean if there is no ectomycorrhizal fungus, there's no pine or no oak? That's correct. That it's an obligate interaction and in both the uh, tree and, and the fungus require each other. Well, I sure hope we see some today. Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Notice that each little mushroom is small. Pick it up. Pick one up. You'll see that there are gills, little lamellae, on which the spores are produced. And this is a really interesting fungus. It's Schizophyllum communi. Would you yes. hold that yeah. fungus for me? And so if this is a gill, when it dries out, the gill splits, schizophyllum, and rolls up and protects itself. Then when it gets wet again, it hydrates and comes back and starts to shoot spores again. So when it rolls up, it rolls up, the spores are inside. Yep, and yeah. the spore producing cells are inside. Right. So that's the dry condition and the wet condition. Yeah. And most of the mushrooms that we've looked at so far today, if they dry out, that's it. But schizophyllum is representative of a group of mushrooms, mushroom-like fungi that can handle desiccation and, and rehydrate and produce spores over and over again. Very, it's a very common fungus. This hemisphere is composed of hundreds of little independent um, chambers. In each chamber, there are, there are translucent sausages that have eight black spores in a row. And they get under water pressure, and they elongate up into the opening at the tip of each of those little chambers. And then the tip ruptures, and it sh they shoot the spores in one shot of eight into the air, and the wind blows them away. And if you collect these when they're releasing spores and put them in a bag, by the time you open that bag in the evening, it'll be black inside from all the spores that are shot in. Nice. That is, Look that. at that. So, this is a Lactaria yeah, species, right. which is a, another um, mycorrhizal associate, and it gets the name Lactarius because it'll ooze out milk, which you might be able to pick up there. This is a kind of a white milk that's coming out. The, the milk is is exceedingly acrid. If you uh, put your tongue to that, it's uh, it's it's very very peppery acrid. Yeah, and here's the um, the tip of it. It's a little different from a typical mushroom in that it's got it's got tubes instead of gills. It looks like polypore. It looks like a polypore. Yeah, but it's um yeah. it's a bully because oh, yeah. it's it's soft and yeah. fleshy. So Tom, you said bully. Bull eats are thirty-six dollars a pound at Monterey Market. What about this one? <laughs> this one is an edible, but nobody gets goes gaga over it. It's it's not so great. Put my weight on there. All right. Okay. What have oh. you got there? Oh, okay. We've got more. <laughs> so you, you find other ectomycorrhizal things here. This is um. This is a, a Russula species, which is also ectomycorrhizal uh, with this pine. And then this gill fungus is actually a close relative of the Siwuus. This is Croerogonthus vinicolor, meaning wine colored. The uh, little cells that make the spores are on the surface of the gills or on the inside of these tubes. And they shoot the spore either halfway to the next gill 
or to the middle of the tube, and then they fall out and the wind blows them away. So in general, if, if it's a less substantial fungus, there'll be more distance between the gills, or there'll be bigger tubes, because it's harder, harder to keep that perfect um, orientation, that is, um, against gravity. But the bigger, tougher mushrooms, they can have smaller pores because they're more stable. Because any, you know, a few degrees change and the spores won't get out. So once they're picked, no more spores are coming out. Hello again. Um, I've brought some of the fungi that we collected up in the botanic garden into the lab. And I've come here because when we were up in the garden, I talked about spores that fungi produce. And I thought that I could show you that. So I'm going to take some of the samples that we collected. I've got some razor blades, I've got some little tools that I use to move sections around, I've got a mounting medium, I've got microscope slides and a cover glass, and I've got two kinds of microscopes, a dissecting microscope and a compound microscope. And I'm going to prepare a mushroom and one of those cramp balls, and then I'm going to show you what they look like through the microscope. We'll look at two fungi from the garden. The first is the cramp ball. Here is one cramp ball under the dissecting scope, and you can see it's made of many small chambers, especially where I've cut it with a razor blade. If you squish that slice, you can see the fertile area, or the hymenium. And if we squish it some more, you can see that it's made up of many cells, like sausages or balloons. And if I squash it harder, you can see here just two of these cells called assi. One to the left is immature, the one in the middle is mature, and ready under water pressure to shoot its spores out the tip of the ascus, out the pore of the chamber, and into the air to be dispersed by the wind. The second fungus is the honey mushroom, which is the third type of mushroom because it's an active parasite of the roots of living plants, although it can also eat the dead roots. If we turn up the cap, we can see the gills or the lamellae, and the surface, each surface of each gill is covered with reproductive cells. And so here is a razor blade slice of one gill showing the two reproductive surfaces or the two hymenium. And if we take a higher magnification look at the hymenium, we can see the cell that makes the spores, the basidium, and the basidiospores, which are shot halfway to the next gill, where gravity takes over, pulls them down out of the mushroom, then disperses them to reproduce the fungus.